I love you so much that I have to travel from Sapele to come see you. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you, First Lady. And all of my boys, they are grown now. <laughs> and the uh, pastor's daughter also is grown. Everybody just grown up and leave me behind. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to be here. And I want to thank every one of you for allowing this to happen. I'm proud to be here, and I'm not here alone. I came with my boss. <laughs> I came with my wife, and uh, listen, if mama is happy, everybody happy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For those that don't know that, you better, you better know that. It will save you a lot of time. <laughs> Mama's not happy. Nobody is happy. Um, will you please stand up? Uh, my wife, please. <laughs> well, I don't know how much time we're going to have, but I'm home then. Last Sunday, I was somewhere, and I'm told, Bishop, 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You, that's, that surprises you, right? Well, 30 minutes. Yeah, Jesus really don't need 30 minutes to do wonders. He passes by, something happened. You looked at him face to face, something happened. One minute. Is a lot of time with him. Hallelujah. Since the last time I've been here and been working so hard and travel, um, I think I've been to the, the continents of the earth now, all around, uh, by God's grace. And I have some materials. This is the package that I brought. And um, we have magazines that tell you quickly about what Olu Lawrence Ministry is doing. And we have some books that will bless you. I mean, <laughs> bless you. These books, um, I was in Hearn, Texas, a few weeks ago. And a lady teaching in a Bible school in Rockdale uh, ordered for 20 copies of these and of two other ones in, among the books. 20 copies each for the students. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. It, with a gift of $150, you can have each of the books and each of the magazine. Other than that, with a gift of $20 and above, you can have each of the copies of the books and the magazines up there. Um, I, I hope, we, are, we, are we on air? Or what is this going to be? Yeah, we're live streaming. Well, I've been in some countries that I can't mention their name because somebody might be watching. But the gospel is spreading. Even in the places I never thought that we have believers. When I got over there, I was shocked that Jesus is not a local Jesus. He's international into places you never expect that there will be disciples. They are there secretly worshiping Jesus. Sometime underground, we call them underground because it's secret. It must not be known. But they're excited about Jesus and so on and so forth. Right now, I'm the African Director for Ministries of Vision International, and I'm in charge of the whole continent of Africa. Then we have pushed the gospel uh, into Kenya, uh, 
uh, when I say we push the gospel into Korea, that don't mean that the people over there are not preaching the gospel. But we are reaching out to them as well. Uh, Kenya, um, Malawi, uh, Sierra Leone. I was in Sierra Leone in uh, November. I spent two weeks in Sierra Leone. Freetown, the city of Freetown, and the city of Bo. And then came back to Nigeria, of course, and South Africa. I was in South Africa 2019. And one other country that I cannot mention the name in 2019. I was about going back to that country when COVID hit. And I'm glad COVID uh, caught me in the USA. So I'm glad I was here when it happened. Otherwise, I don't know what happened. But it was good. Amen. I can see that that God has been blessing y'all. And I'm excited. So I want to be part of the blessings that the Lord has been pouring on you. The church is beautiful. You did a good job. I'm going to tell your daddy that you've been a good, <laughs> that you've been good, and that he should pour more blessings on you because you're doing good. Actually, he, he sent me to spy on you between you and I, <laughs> just us, to spy on you and see how you were doing. And now that I'm here for this morning and this evening, I believe already I have a good report to give concerning you. Amen. Are you ready to be blessed? Uh, let's just pray. Say after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your secret. Your secret that is not known to everybody. Is known to only those that seek for it. And we have come this morning to seek for it. And we'll be back by 6 o'clock to continue to seek for it. As we receive this secret, we believe that it's going to be of a great blessing to us. And we'll be able to share with other people in the name of Jesus. Bless us as we listen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, I take authority over every foul spirit in Mount Pleasant. You foul spirit of darkness hovering all over this city, causing death, sicknesses, and diseases. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command the stronghold of witchcraft to be broken in the name of Jesus. I ask that the glory of the Lord come upon man pleasant. In the name of Jesus, I ask that the people of God rejoice. And that the people of God be blessed. And that the people of God receive the secret of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you to sit down, relax, vaccine seat belt if you can. And let's just, um, let's just fly. Today, I want to share with you understanding how to seek the kingdom. Understanding how to seek the kingdom. It is very difficult to do something that you don't know how to do. And actually, it is impossible to do it. And God will not leave us to second guess or to struggle for the things that he wants us to do. One thing that you quickly learn about God is that God make his points clear. 
every time. You don't have to guess. You don't have to pray about something that God wants you to do. Because he makes it very clear. People that don't understand God have difficulties in uh, knowing what God actually expects from them. As they come to the to the services or come to conference or come to church service. So we're going to begin this morning from Matthew chapter 13. There's something about priority. God prioritizes what he wants us to do. And Something good about priority is that it saves your time. You already know what to do. And so because you know what to do, you don't have to keep guessing or going about trying to check maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. You know what to do. So Jesus Christ told a story in Matthew chapter 13. The same day, verse 1, when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a, a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parable. Saying, Behold, a sower went to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith, they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had not no root, they withered away. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and shook them. But all that fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Verse 9, who had ear to hear, let him hear. Verse 10 will shock you. When Jesus told the story of a farmer that went to sow his crops, verse 10, the disciple came to Jesus and said, why are you speaking in parables? And Jesus replied and said, he answered verse 11, and said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is a mystery. And it takes effort to discover that mystery. So Jesus likened the kingdom of God to a farmer that went to sow and sowed the seed. And some did well, some grew up and died. Some, the birds, eat them up. So Jesus likened the kingdom of God the, the preaching of the gospel to like a farmer that went to sow. So I'm sowing this morning the seed of the word of God. We cannot determine 
if this seed will germinate. You are the one that determines if the seed you're receiving this morning will be a blessing to you. So Jesus said, I speak in parable because the mystery of the kingdom is given to you, not to them. The message of Jesus was clear. And it was one message that Jesus preached for three and a half years. One message. What was the message? It was in prosperity. What was the message? It was in faith. What was the message? It was in healing. What was the message? It was in Calvary. Jesus never preached resurrection. Am I still in church? I probably might, you know, confuse your theology a little bit, but he fix it when I'm gone. <laughs> but I just want to, you know, shake your foundation a little bit. Jesus never preached resurrection. Check it. I can put anything down on that. Jesus never preached Calvary. What was the message of Jesus? Kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Come with me. Are you getting anything yet? Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Right from the time that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the very first message, the very first public statement that the master made, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, do what? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. Change your mind. You know, we religialize the word repent. It just means change your mind from the old order to the new order. If your thinking is wrong, your doings will be wrong. So your thinking controls your entire being. And if your thinking is wrong, everything that you are saying is wrong. So your thinking forms your attitude. As a man think, so he is. So Jesus said, <laughs> change your thinking. For the kingdom has come. The kingdom has arrived. The kingdom is here. Change your focus. For the kingdom has arrived. Change your theology. For the kingdom has arrived. Change your mind. For the kingdom has arrived. Jesus was the most misunderstood human being that live on earth. The people in his days misunderstood Jesus completely. They thought he was going to be a normal preacher. He was just going to be like the rest of them. But they were disappointed. Because everything Jesus was saying was revealing what they were doing. Jesus was speaking about the kingdom. And the more Jesus talked about the kingdom, the more the theology is being cracked down. 
Oh, you're not hearing me. The more the religion is being shattered. So Jesus was making religious business unprofitable. Because you always talk about the kingdom. And they don't like it because it exposes their nature. It exposes their heart. It exposes their religious mind. So that's why the message of the gospel is a good news. What is the good news? Every other thing don't work. But what works is the kingdom. Every other thing fail, but what will not fail is the kingdom. What then is the kingdom? The kingdom is the sovereign leadership or governance of the king. Whereby it produces citizens that look exactly like the king, talk like the king, dress like the king, reason like the king, eat like the king, fellowship like the king. The message of the kingdom is God's government coming to earth. God's government coming to our heart. Every kingdom have a government. Every kingdom have subjects. Every kingdom have laws. No nation is built on grace. Every nation is built on laws. Every nation is built on constitution. No nation is built on grace. But so many people in church Believe that we're in the days of grace. Therefore, we can do whatever we like. Yes, we're in the days of grace, but no nation is built upon grace. And if you, we are of the nation of heaven, trust me, heaven have constitution that we must live by. So Jesus Christ began to teach the disciples and that the message of the kingdom is a mystery. Kingdom itself is a mystery. If you don't like the kingdom message, God hide it from you. Come with me. Matthew chapter 13. So it don't look like he's just talking about it. Let me show you. Because you will never be the same again. After today. Look at verse, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom. But to them it is not given. For whosoever had, had what? For whosoever had the knowledge of the kingdom, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever had not the knowledge of the kingdom, from him shall be taken away even that he had. Oh. Pastor, am I doing something wrong? Okay. 
Thank you. Stay with me. Because I want you to feed. I want to feed you. With the word. Jesus said. Those that have. The knowledge. Of the kingdom. More will be given to them. That means. The kingdom. Or the knowledge of the kingdom. Has to be. Something that you pursue. Something that you seek after. It's not being served on a platter of gold. Come on, church. It's something that you prioritize. It's something that you go after. It doesn't come to you voluntarily. You have to have to determine to know it. So Jesus said, those that don't have the knowledge, what they thought they have was taken from them. See, some don't have the knowledge, but they thought they have. And Jesus said, whatever they think they have, the ignorance that they have, the confusion, whatever they thought they have will be taken from them. But those that have the knowledge of the kingdom, more is given to them. The more you seek the knowledge of the kingdom, the more God unfolded to you. The more he gives it to you. So if I'm going to seek for the knowledge of the kingdom of God, I'm going to have to do more than one Sunday in a month. I'm going to have to do more than one service in the week. Oh, you're not hearing me. Well, in case I step on your toes, he's going to fix it when I'm gone. So you have to do more than you usually do. If you're going to seek for the knowledge of the kingdom. Remember, it is dangerous to be in the middle. Because Jesus said, those that don't have the knowledge of the kingdom, what they have will be taken away from them. If they were ignorant before, they would become super ignorant. If they were confused before, they would become super confused. And you can go on and on and on and on. But those that have the secret of the knowledge of the kingdom, more will be given to them. They will receive more understanding. They will receive more revelation. They will receive more of the knowledge of the kingdom. So it's going to be like onion. The more you open it, the more there's something else to open. The more you open it, the more there's something else to open. That's how the kingdom is. <laughs> Come with me. Therefore, verse 13, speak I to them in parables because they seen not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand they don't understand they hear it they see it they are in the conference they come to the Sunday school but they don't understand The secret of the kingdom. Come with me to verse 16. Jesus said, Blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. 
and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Look up, church. What Jesus was saying is that many prophets have information, but no revelation. Jesus said, many righteous people desire to have the secret of the kingdom, but they don't. Jesus, are you saying that Moses, are you saying that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they seek to have the secret of the knowledge of the kingdom and they don't have it? Yes. That's tough. And strong. Jesus said, Isaiah, Prophet Nahum, Joel, Hezekiah, Hosea, and all the prophets, Jesus said, they seek to know the secret of the kingdom. He said, but they don't. They have information. But they don't have revelation of the secret of the kingdom. Jesus said, it is given to you. And those prophets seek to live in your day. But they are not. How privileged are you this morning? How blessed are you this morning? This is the best time to live. Because now you have opportunity to get into the secret of the kingdom. The one that Moses desire. The righteous people desire. The prophet desire. But they did not have it. All of their days. They wanted to. They long for it. But it was not given to them. But now it's given to you. Look at verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone, mark your Bible if you have it. When anyone hear it, the word of the kingdom. And understand it, it not. Mark the word kingdom and understand it. Mark it. Look up, church. Jesus said, see, the problem is that we don't do what Jesus said. We only do what Jesus did. We preach what Jesus did. We don't preach what Jesus said. We preach healing. Jesus simply healed. Healing naturally takes place in his meeting. But he never preached healing. <laughs> you love me? I love you too much. Jesus. Jesus never preached faith, but faith happens in his meaning. We build the entire structure upon what Jesus did. We build our entire organization upon what Jesus did, but not what Jesus said. That Two different things. Doing what Jesus did or doing what Jesus said. Jesus said only two things he 
wants from you and me. Two things. And one of those things is to seek the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Only two things are required this morning. From each and every one of us. Only two things. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first. Mark the word first. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 13. Because I want to explain to you. Understand. Seek first. Mark the word first. Number one. God does not stay in the economy. He stay in the first class. First. First. Seek first. First. There are other things to seek, but Jesus said, <coughs> seek first. First. The kingdom. The value. Of the kingdom. The nature of the kingdom. The char characteristics. Of the kingdom. The fellowship. Of the kingdom. The loyalty. Of the kingdom. Jesus said seek first. The purpose of the kingdom. The lifestyle of the kingdom. Jesus says, seek first. So there's no confusion. There shouldn't be any confusion among the believers. But religious people like me and many more have confused the people of what to seek. Seeking for prosperity. That's not bad. But that's not the first thing. We're seeking healing. It's not bad. But that's not the first thing. Are you still in church? You will never be the same again. Not another day. We seek what benefit us. But not what benefit the kingdom. We want the drop the things that it comes. But Jesus want to give us the kingdom. In the kingdom, everything is there. But we come to church because of religion. We want to pick the one we want. We want to pick the prosperity and then pick the healing. Oh, I'm good with this. So, uh, bye. I'll be, be back next Sunday. He wants to give you the entire kingdom. The entire kingdom. Seek first. Don't forget the word first. The kingdom. And what do you seek in the kingdom? Jesus wants the kingdom. The way it's structured in heaven. To be in our heart here on earth. Our original purpose. Is that we will rule the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. To have dominion over the earth. Dominion means sovereign rulership. Sovereign authority over the earth. That was the purpose of our creation. And Jesus came back to give us what we lost in Adam. 
we lost the kingdom. We did not lose religion. He did not come to build religion. The church is not a religious organization. Jesus is not a religious savior. He's not a religious leader. They try everything to reduce who Jesus is. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on, somebody say amen in the house. He's not a religious leader. Let nobody reduce my Jesus to a religious leader. Because he's not. He's a king. He's a king of kings. So when we seek the kingdom first. And the loss of the kingdom righteousness. We are all righteous this morning. That's why we're in church. You were righteous at the traffic light. True or false? True or false? True, right? Meaning you are right with the law. You are right at the stop sign. You are right with the government. That's why we're here this morning. You were not right with the government to make government smile. You are right with the government to protect your rights. Because you don't want to lose your right. Because the moment you are not right with the government, then they make you lose your right by being locked up. Am I still in church? So Jesus says, seek the kingdom and righteousness. It's not a religious word. It simply means be right with the king. Be in line with the king. And he said, all these other things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom value. Seek first the kingdom lifestyle. Seek first the kingdom nature. And it's righteousness being right with the king. Obey the laws of the king. And once you do these two things, your life becomes an obligation of the king. Once we do these two things, the king get worried for us. We don't worry anymore. The king take over our worries. Church, your life is attached to the reputation of the king. If you are sick, the king is worried. Why? Because it makes the king look bad. Life in the kingdom is different from life in the uh, democracy. Life in the kingdom is that the subjects are attached to the king. The king look after the subject. The king provide for his subject. The king take care of his subject. That's in the kingdom. In the democracy, you're, you're, you're on your own. The king makes the law. The people don't make the law. In the kingdom, the king write the constitution. In a democracy, the people write the constitution. In a democracy, 
the people choose the president and the prime minister. In the kingdom, the king choose the subject. So if you understand kingdom, you will understand the Bible. But as long as you read the Bible with the eye of democracy, then you're going to have some issue. Because the Bible is not about democracy. The Bible is about a kingdom. Every time you pick up your Bible, I want you to be very clear that you are coming into confrontation with a kingdom. A king and his people. A king and his children. The Bible is about a king and his children. It's about kingdom. A kingdom government. A kingdom government. Let me explain to you. When you are flying into the United States, the officers at the airport don't know you. But then you give the officer a piece of booklet. It's called passport. Italian call it passaporte. So you give the officer that passport. The officer recognizes the government, not you. So the officer wants to know in his mind which government sent this one. And then he looked at the passport, then he sees the government. He doesn't like you. He don't have to like you. But he recognizes the kingdom that is backing you up. So the next time you showed up anywhere, make sure you go with a full capacity of heavenly government. You don't have the power and the strength to fight the devil. But anytime you show up as little, as short, as tall, as big, as small as I am. And then he looked at me. Guess what? He did not see me, but he see the entire government of the federal government of heaven. Standing by my back and by my side with Michael. Who doesn't smile? <laughs> With Michael, whose job is to crack down on anything that you will harass the king's son. Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it for real. So it's not about you. It's about the government that brought you up. It's about the government that you represent. That's the reason why Jesus said, whatever you see, the devil cast him out. You don't cast him out because you are somebody. You cast him out because the government of the kingdom of heaven is standing by you and by the authority of the heavenly kingdom. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Ah. It's hot in here. That's what happened. Come with me to Matthew. Chapter 13. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at verse 17, verse 19, I beg your pardon. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Church, the devil doesn't send demons. 
when it comes to the matter of the kingdom. He go by himself. You see that? When anyone hears, he's not afraid that you are hearing it right now. But he's scared. Should you understand it? He's worried. Church, look up here. He was the anointed shiru. He was a special angel that protects the presence of God, that protects the glory from killing us when he was not a devil. That was his job. He was anointed sheriff in charge of praise and worship. He was blessed by God. He was specially created for that assignment. So he probably know more about God than we we ever know. He knows about the kingdom. He was there when everything was set up. And he doesn't want anyone else to understand the kingdom. You know why? He knows the moment you understand it. The moment you get it. The moment you get the secret of the kingdom. You are completely uncontrollable to him. Ah, oh, you're not hearing me. He knows that. That he cannot hold anything against you anymore. Because now you understand the secret of the kingdom. He knows he cannot dribble you anymore. He cannot toss you to and fro anymore. So when anybody hears the word of God concerning the kingdom, and understand it not. He, the enemy, the wicked one, quickly picked it up so that he would not understand. He don't send demons to do that. He go after that by himself. Ah. Oh. Verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word and I know with joy. He was excited. Oh, he loved what he hears. But look at it, verse 21. Yet had not root in himself, but endured for a while. Or when tribulation, persecution, his friends mocked him. His friends talked to him, what you doing with this crowd, man? Where did you go over the weekend? I heard some African came to your church and all of a sudden you're now holy or what? Persecute you. Then the excitement of what he heard flies off. The enemy go after the people from understanding the secret of the kingdom. There's some other people here and afterwards the cares of life, what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 6, said take no thought the cares shook that which they heard 
in their heart, shook it up, and they lose it. But another 25% that hears the word, the word mixed up with good intention in the heart. Jesus said, quickly, start, start having seed, fruit, bearing fruit immediately, reaching out to other people because they understand the secret of the kingdom. It is good to come to church, but you must come to church understanding the secret of the kingdom. When you understand that secret, sickness, diseases cannot stay in your body. Because the king will heal you because your healing is good for the king. It makes the king look great. One thing about a kingdom you must understand. Every kingdom or king is proud when the subject are doing well. When the people have been successful, the king rejoice. When the people are gaining ground, expounding, progressing, the king is excited. The king feels great when they are conquering. And taking over territories. And that's what I'm charging you this weekend. You must rise up and take over territories. Are you here in me, church? You must rise up and break the barrier. Because you that I'm looking at right now, it is impossible for you to fail. Why? No manufacturer manufactures its product to fail. And I check with your manufacturer. And guess what? In Genesis, he said, Behold, everything that he made, it was what? Good. Satisfied. Rubber stamp. And when he said it's good, he also put his image on it. Well, somebody's not hearing me. He put his image on it. Because no manufacturer will put his image on something that will fail. <laughs> They're not doing that because they like you. They're doing that because of their reputation. They don't want their product to fail. So they tested it. They guaranteed it. And they put a little note on it called manual the maker's mind so as you use this product as we ask you to use it oh are you getting it now you're getting it right that's about getting the secret of the kingdom I'm going to let you go in, in a little uh, a few minutes because since I got saved I don't preach long anymore You are better be happy you are not in Paul Church this morning. Yeah, he'd be preaching all night and one of the guys fell down and died. And they went downstairs and picked the guy up and said, you are not dying on us. They prayed over him and the guy came back to life. Boom, they back upstairs and Paul said, as I said before, Now I say again, oh, you thought Paul was going to shut down the service because somebody fell and died. Oh, it's time to go home. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Delivering us from this, Pastor Paul, it's time to go home. And all of a sudden he said, like I said to you before, now I say again, he starts all over. No manufacturer wants its product to fail. If you didn't get anything in this first service, get that. God manufactured you. And he put his image on you. 
Genesis 1.26. Because he has tested you. He has proved you. And he said this product is good. If anything is wrong with this product, don't repair it by yourself. Send it to an authorized dealer. We will fix it at our cost. And we will send it back to you at our cost. Not because they like you, but because of their reputation. God did the same thing. If anything is wrong with this product, Jesus is still the authorized author. And the authorized dealer. He fix it and send it back to your house. Free of charge. Don't cost you nothing. Stay with me. Ah. So tribulation, persecution. Do you know the persecution is very good for the kingdom? Very good. The kingdom cannot be destroyed by persecution. But it's the other way around. Persecution makes the kingdom to expand. It makes the kingdom to be progressive. Persecution is a proof that the kingdom is real. Persecution, because if your product is good, you should be able to, to test it. So when you have been persecuted, it's just a test that the kingdom is real. And the kingdom is good. And the kingdom cannot fail. The kingdom cannot be bought with money. The kingdom cannot be destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in a real kingdom that cannot be suffocated and no devil can destroy it. It's built upon solid rock. This kingdom of ours is everlasting. Nothing can destroy it. Nothing, nothing on earth can destroy this kingdom. Nothing. And it's forever and ever and ever. So how do I seek the kingdom? Number one, write it down. The steps you must take to seek the kingdom. Because the word seek means it's not accidental. You must determine to go after the kingdom. How do I seek the kingdom? The word seek means pursue. It means you determine. You cannot get the secret of the kingdom by mistake. It doesn't come casually. It's what you determine to go after. Number two, seek means study. You study for it. You want to know it. You want, to, you want to understand it. Number three, seeking means to explore. You explore everything about the kingdom. Explore everything about the government of the kingdom. Government of God's kingdom. Explore kingdom legislation. Explore kingdom culture. Kingdom value. Kingdom economics. Explore kingdom relationship. Explore kingdom habits. Number four. The word seek means to understand. Understand. The greatest fear of the devil is for you to understand. He knows that once you understand, you cannot be deceived anymore. Yes, you cannot 
be deceived anymore. Understanding. You cannot be attacked. And if you attack, you know what to do. If you attack by the enemy, you know what to do when you understand the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the only spirit with human flesh that are authorized to be on earth. Let me say that again, very slowly. You are the only spirit being with human flesh that is authorized on earth. Let me say it again. You are a spirit. It's just that you have flesh. It is your flesh that qualifies you to live on earth. Your body. Your body is a blessing. Because it qualifies you to be on this planet. Any spirit that does not have body is illegal. I say that again. Any spirit without body is illegal. The power of God is here right now. It's illegal. The king has just walked in. Don't you ever be afraid of any demon spirit. I'm not saying that to make you excited. I just want you to understand the fact. We are spirit. But we have body. And our body gives us license to be on earth. Therefore, any other spirit without body by the constitution of the kingdom is illegal. I declare to all that hears me in Mount Pleasant, every spirit out there without human body is illegal by the authority of the word of God. Therefore, Jesus said, cast him out. So that's not a job for the pastor alone. It's for all the citizens of the kingdom. You're not to be afraid. All you need to know is that it's illegal for that spirit to be in your house. It's illegal for that spirit to be on your daughter. It's illegal for that spirit to be on your son or grandson. A granddaughter. So all you do is to look right into that spirit and say it's illegal for you to be in my house. Get out in the name of Jesus. And that's it. The devil knew that it's illegal for him to be on earth. That's why he built the kingdom, prince of the power of the air. He cannot build it on earth. Oh, you're not hearing me. It's illegal for him because he doesn't have body. When you read Mark chapter 5, you see where demon spirit scramble for human body. To operate because you need a body to operate on earth. Are you getting it? And that's why he 
goes into human body. And in the absence of human body, maybe animal, going to the swine. Because it's illegal to operate on earth without a body. So how do I seek? You have to understand the word of the kingdom. I'm giving you number four. Number five, seek means to learn. You have to learn the secret of the kingdom. Deliberately, willingly, seriously. That, that, that you have to go after it. With all of your heart. Seek it first. Make it a priority. That I'm going to learn the secret of the kingdom. Number six. Seek means to consider, ponder, meditate on. Seek means to desire, to know. First, the kingdom. Pursue first the kingdom. Explore first the kingdom. Understand first the kingdom. And all these things shall be added to you. Consider first the kingdom. Have a passion to know first the kingdom. Preoccupy yourself with the kingdom. The kingdom laws, the kingdom ordinances, the kingdom legislation, the kingdom constitution, the kingdom government, the kingdom structure, the kingdom value, the kingdom lifestyle, the kingdom provision. Preoccupy yourself with it. And the moment you do that, all other things the king begin to add, add. It will be an addition. Addition to you. Addition to your car. Addition to your house. Addition to your children. Addition to your business. Addition to your family. Addition to everything. Oh, let me tell you. Even when you don't desire to have two, three houses, you have no choice. It will be added to you. But king, I've already gotten one. Yes, as long as you keep seeking my kingdom, that's what comes with it. It comes with addition of everything. Addition of blessings. In fact, as a citizen of the kingdom, you ought to be surprised that the king is not blessing you. You ought to be asking the kingdom, how come I've not received my check of blessing? Because it is the king desire to add it to you. You don't have to pray about it. It's automatic. You don't have to fast. It's legislated. You seek me, I give you addition. You seek me first, I add something to your life. You seek to know my kingdom, I give you more. You have abundance. Abundant of understanding. Abundant of knowledge of the kingdom. The more you seek, the more I give to you. The more you long for it, the more I open it up for you. The more you want to know, the more I showed you. Because God does not volunteer anything. You have to want to have it. And when you want to have it, he give it to you. You want to know it, he showed it to you. You want to know about the kingdom? He teaches you. You are willing to learn? He gives you more. And then add all other things to you. 
Did you get anything this morning? I want to pray for you right now. Is there anybody in this place that would like to be a citizen of my country? Heaven. Technically, we are citizens of heaven. Because right here we live under the constitution of the kingdom. That's what I just share with you right now. If you have never been a citizen of this kingdom, would you this morning want to come into this kingdom and experience addition? Will you please stand?